All right, we left off on Lewis structures. And when we talked about our Lewis structures, we were using valence bond theory. Now valence bond theory said that the electrons that we were using for our bonds came from the atomic orbitals. And we need to keep our minds on that as we go through the next few slides, because we're gonna realize that we're gonna have serious problems using atomic orbitals. So if we start out and we consider bonding in hydrogen, we know that hydrogen here has one electron. Remember it was 1s1. We said that electron was in the 1s orbital. And if we drew it out, we said that, okay, our proton is here, our 1s is kind of here, and we put our little electron there. And what we got was an overlap between the orbitals from one of the um, hydrogens and the other one of the hydrogens. And this overlap, and that should be inside that little overlap there, corresponds to our bond, realizing that we are overlapping 1s orbitals. If we did fluorine, and we know that fluorine has a single bond, it's got some electrons and some lone pairs. And in this case, our fluorine was 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. And we had, when we drew our orbitals out and we put our electrons in, remember we used our arrows way back when in chapter six, we have this electron here sitting in a 2p orbital, and that is what is overlapping to make this bond. So valence bond theory, we're saying that the bonds are formed by sharing of electrons in overlapping atomic orbitals. All right, this seems okay so far, but we have a problem with this theory. And the problem with this theory is the fact, again, that we're using atomic orbitals, okay? So, so what? So let's consider carbon. Carbon, we know, is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. The 1s2 is that helium core, and we're going to ignore it. So if we look at it back to our orbital diagrams, and remember those are the boxes with the arrows in it. If we start it out, we have our 2s, and we have two electrons in it, and we have one electron in each of these 2p orbitals. Well, if we drew that in terms of our dots, this is a pair of dots, and these are dots by themselves. And the first thing I would have here is I would have a carbon with a pair of dots and then dots by itself. Well, we know that the first thing we have to do if we're gonna make something like methane is we have to start with carbon in four separate dots. So let's at least do that. And let's go from carbon like this into carbon like this. Well. How would that be in terms of our atomic orbitals? Well, in terms of our atomic orbitals, it would just mean taking this electron right here and putting it right over there. And if we did that, and that seat or that space is available, so we can do that. If we put our electrons in, we now have one in each orbital. And that is going to correspond to this right here where we have these four free electrons. Now, this is an S and these, the are P's. And you go, okay, again, why is that an issue? Well, the S orbital is a great big sphere, and the P orbitals are dumbbells at right angles. So if we drew them out, we would kind of have orbitals, remembering I can't draw, that look something like this. So we have a 90 degrees between each one of these sets of orbitals. Well, the problem here is that methane is tetrahedral, with a 109.5 degree bond angle. So if methane is tetrahedral with a 109.5 degree bond angle, and these guys are 90 degrees, if we put these guys together, we're not gonna get 109.5, so we have a problem. And as soon as you got a problem with your theory, it's time for a new theory. So my advice is to go to this page. This is a short YouTube video on what hybrid orbital theory is but we're gonna start out with hybrid and we know what hybrid is. We know that a hybrid is a mix and it's a mix of different things. So we are going to mix different orbitals and we are going to mix S orbitals and P orbitals. And if we have to, we're gonna mix D orbitals. And the key here is the number of orbitals that you bring in is gonna be the same as the number of hybrid orbitals. So if I bring in an S and a P, and I have two orbitals, 
I will make two new orbitals. We've got to figure out how we're going to describe them. And we describe them as sp hybrids. And it's a mixture. So now instead of being by themselves as S and P, they are 50% each S and P. Because I brought in two orbitals, I'm going to have two sp hybrids. So instead, I'm going to have two new orbitals, each of which is a 50% mix of an S and a P. So how might, how might this work? If I took my carbon, and remember we started with the carbon with the boxes, and I just put them on a straight line here rather than different energies, and we put two here and one each over here, and we knew that that corresponded to a pair and two by themselves, what we're going to do instead is we're going to take, and we're going to take one S, and three Ps with one electron in each, where we start out with an S and three separate P orbitals, and we are going to mix each together so that each new orbital is going to be one fourth S and one fourth each of the Ps. And we're going to have four orbitals in and four orbitals out. Because we're mixing an S and three Ps, we call this an S P three orbital where three implies three P orbitals brought in. So what we're doing, we're mixing two non-equivalent orbitals like S's and P's. These hybrids have a completely different shape and you can't have more and note the lone pairs even hybridize as well. So we're gonna use that as we talk about our geometries and our hybridization. So what does this look like? If we take the S and these P orbitals, you remember we have PX, PY, and PZ each on those axes, and we mix them. Now these have a big sort of lobe and a little tiny piece, and then we tend to ignore this little tiny piece and focus on this one. And while these look really weird in space like this, if you put all four of these together, you really are going to get that nice tetrahedral geometry where you have a bond angle of 109.5. So the mixture of the S and each of those three P orbitals going in gives us exactly what we want. So because it gives us what we want, we're not proud, we're gonna use it. Now, at some point, you're probably gonna hit organic and you're gonna to need to know the details, but right now we don't need to know the details. We really just need to know what the hybridization is. So if we have our number of electron pairs, so we talked about electron pairs, and when we talked about electron pairs, we had two, three, four, five, and six electron pairs. Remember, this was our linear geometry. For the starting point, this was a trigonal planar. And our bent geometries, et cetera. And note, the number of electron pairs is going to dictate the hybridization. So if I need two orbitals, two electron pairs, I'm to bring in one S and one P, I'm going to have SP hybridization. If I need three, um, electron pairs, I'm going to have an sp2. This means we're going to mix one s and two p's. If I need four, I'm going to have sp3. So our number of electron pairs dictates the hybridization. As soon as we get to five, we're going to notice here that if we have sp3, we have just run out of p orbitals. And these are expanded or hypervalent octets. And when we expand our octet, we have to be in period three and below. The nice part about period three is that period three has some 3D orbitals that are empty and available, and that is what is going to expand and our electrons are gonna go into the Ds. So our hybridizations, sp, sp2, sp3, sp3 and a D and sp3, D2. If you count, the number of orbitals that you bring in, so S, P, 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 D, D, which is what this S, P, 3, D, 2 means, then you're going to have a total of six orbitals and six electron pairs. So again, two electron pairs, S, P, your hybridization looks like this, your geometry is linear and your bond angle is 180. If we have three electron pairs, we have S, P, 2 hybridization, and this really will give us trigonal planar geometry. We've seen sp3, that is tetrahedral, 
five is trigonal bipyramidal and all its um, other possibilities. Same with the rest, by the way. SP3D, six octahedral, and all of its um, other geometries and SP3D2. <clears throat> Again, what they look like in space. SP, we would bring in an S orbital and we would bring in a P orbital. And when we take and we mix the probability of an S and a P, we're going to get two new orbitals that look like that. If we do three orbitals and we do three sp2 here and we mix an s and we mix two p's we're going to make this if we have sp3 we're going to mix an s and we're going to mix all three of our p orbitals and when we do that we're going to make this geometry right here and we're going to make four new bonds so here two new bonds two sp hybrid orbitals Here we're going to get three sp2 hybrid orbitals, and here we're going to get four sp3 hybrid orbitals. So we can do the hybridization. So to do the hybridization, we ask ourselves how many electron pairs, and we're going to do it for each central atom. So we're going to have central atom one, two, three, and four. For central atom number one, we see that we have four electron pairs. Our geometry is trigonal pyramidal, and our hybridization is sp3. Why? Four electron pairs, sp3. Now, carbon, our atom number two is a carbon. It has four bonds. It has four electron pairs, and it is also sp3. Carbon number three, if we look at this, has one single, excuse me, single here, single here, and a double here, which gives us three electron pairs. Remember, it's the number of bonded atoms, so that double bond counts for one, and that is sp2 hybridization. And carbon four, two lone pairs and two bonds, has a total of four electron pairs, and that is also going to be sp3. So, and take this to the last thing we're going to do in this chapter, and that is we're going to count pi and sigma bonds. Sigma, by definition, implies direct overlap and a pi bond implies indirect overlap so before we see that we're going to do the takeaway and the takeaway is that all singles are sigmas for every double there's one sigma and one pi and a triple is one sigma and two pi so you're going to start out with sigma and everything that you add is going to be a bond. So if we have vinegar here, or acetic acid, which is the molecule that is active in vinegar, and we want to ask ourselves how many pi and sigma bonds we have, we're going to draw the little structure. Put our lone pairs in. And then we're going to count. And as we count these, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven sigma bonds and a sigma that's capitalized sorry looks like that we have seven sigma bonds and sigma is kind of like single and then we only have one double we know that every double is one sigma and one pi we've already counted the sigma and that leaves us with one pi bond and let's verify that we have one two three four five six seven um and then eight here so we have a total of eight bonds remember lone pairs aren't bonds so don't count them All right, so how might this look? So if we have C H2 CH2, which by the way is all this is, we're going to take and we're going to bond this, and we know we're going to have a carbon, and our electrons are going to come here. We have a double bond here, and a carbon and a hydrogen. This is a diagram, by the way, down here of the bonding involved. So let's see if we can understand. If we have this molecule, we're going to realize that the bonding, and we don't care about the outside atoms when we do hybridization, all we care about is the centrals, and the carbons here are both sp2, okay? Two sp2 carbon bonds. Now, how would this work? Well, if we imagine sp2, we know an sp2 is a mixture of one s and two p's, 
And if we put these together, we're going to get three new bonds, and they're going to give us, assuming I can draw, that nice trigonal planar geometry. How could we do this? So if we think about our carbon, and remember our carbon has our four dots, and we think about where those electrons are in terms of our orbital diagram, and we put our electrons in, we're going to get this. Now, if we have sp2 hybridization, this tells us that we are going to mix 1s and 2ps. If we mix 1s and 2ps, we are going to make three new bonds, so we're mixing 1s and 2ps. We will make sp2 hybrids. Our sp2 hybrids look like one up, one down here 120 degrees apart, and another 120 degrees apart. Well, if I take and I just rotate that a little bit, and I go over here, I see that that's what I've done. sp2, sp2, sp2. Same with this one, sp2, sp2, sp2. What are these little blue guys? These little blue guys are the hydrogens coming in. So these are the hydrogens right here. And what I've done so far, and by the way, this is the overlap between the carbons, is I've kind of drawn the skeletal structure. Carbon hydrogen, carbon hydrogen, single bond carbon hydrogen, carbon hydrogen. Now, each one of these five bonds is a sigma bond. And if we count down here, we have one and then two, and we can keep going and get a total of five sigmas. So the key here is what is left. These are direct overlap. This overlap right here is directly in between the carbon in the center and the hydrogen. And that's what a sigma bond is. So what is left? What is left is this p orbital non-bonded on each carbon atom. And this is the p orbital. So here, this is the leftover p orbital from each of the carbons. And each one of these has in it an electron. Now, notice I'm not putting one on each side. Remember, these p orbitals have two lobes. We're going to put one electron in each. And so we ask ourselves, well, what the heck is a pi bond? Well, a pi bond comes from indirect overlap. And what is happening here on our pi bond is that these orbitals are actually bending in top and bottom to make a pi bond. And the pi bond is the overlap of both lobes of this p orbital. Okay, what is that? Well, that's a, that is a pi bond. Why is that a pi? Because it's indirect. It's going to be above and below the atom. So if you get onto organic and you start to have to wrap your head around this, realize that every single bond is a sigma and Every double bond is one sigma and one pi. And this pi bond that we have on our um, eth ethene group or ethylene group really is direct overlap. So this is the sigma bond and the pi bond right up here, top and bottom. So we can count these. If we want to count pi and sigma, let's put our lone pair in here, make it look a little less weird. Every single bond is a sigma. So sigma, sigma sigma and sigma. Every double is one sigma and one pi. So I've got one sigma and one pi. Every triple is one sigma and two pi's. So if I want to count these, I'm going to have three pi bonds and I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six sigma bonds. So do you need to know where they come from? No, not now. You hit organic, yes, but for right now, be able to count. If it's a single, it's a sigma. If it's a double, one sigma, one pi. And if it's a triple, one sigma and two pi.